the hem of his garment. Oh, if I can but touch some part of his robe, I know I'll be healed, my sins all forgiven. Oh, if I can but touch him, I know I'll be whole. A woman one day sought many physicians, hallelujah, but rather grew worse in the Bible, we're told. But when she had heard of the healings of Jesus, she found what she needed for her body and soul. Everybody, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. Thank God. If I can but touch some part of his robe. Well, I know I'll be healed. My sins all forgiven, thank the Lord. If I can but touch him, I know I'll be whole. Nicodemus, he came to my Jesus one night. His eyes were blinded to the pathway of right. He couldn't understand, glory, how a man, when he's old, can be born of the Spirit, have rest for his soul. Oh, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, Yes, Lord, if I can but touch some part of his robe, well, I know I'll be healed completely, Lord. Sin's all forgiven. Thank you for it, Jesus. If I can but touch him, I know I'll be whole. Find Bartimaeus sat by the highway side begging, hallelujah. Nobody could help him down life's weary way. But you know what happened? My Jesus came by and heard his sad cry. Yes, he did. Oh, he touched his blinded eyes and he healed him that day. Sing it for Jesus, if I can but touch, glory to God, the hem of his garment. That's what it's going to take. If I can but touch some part of his robe, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, I'll be healed, get ready, and my sins all forgiven, praise the Lord. If I can but touch him, I know I'll be whole. Sing it for Jesus, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, hallelujah. Oh, if I can but touch, bless Mother Lord, part of his robe, praise the Lord, I know I'll be healed. Thank you, Jesus, for oh, my sins forgiven. Hallelujah. Oh, if I can but touch him, I know. Let's sing it one more time for Jesus, everybody. Oh, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. If I can but touch some part of his robe. Well, I know I'll be healed. My 
sins forgiven. Oh, if I can but touch him, I know I'll be home. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before you're seated tonight, everybody please repeat after me from 1 John 3 and 8 for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. Say, thank you, Jesus. This means... I don't have to be sick. I can be made whole. I don't have to be bound. I can be set free. The devil don't like it. There's not a thing he can do about it. Jesus set me free. I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. Free in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Free. Free because of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, right now. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The Lord bless you. I feel a great many needs here tonight that God's going to meet. There's no church in the nation that I had rather be tonight than right here at Paxson Revival Center with your pastor, Brother Dobbs, and you folks. Amen. So I walked down the aisle, and I saw so many of you that I've seen here from the past. It's been a little over two years since I was here at Paxson Revival Center, but you've been in my prayers. I've been hearing the good reports. I've been hearing about the miracles. Hallelujah. And tonight, I was so burdened with this service on the, on the plane before the, the wheels ever touched that runway. I was asking God to move over this entire audience tonight. I said, Lord, if there's ever a night that you let your Holy Ghost come down like a blanket over the heads of the people to meet the needs, hallelujah, I begin to feel your needs. Whoo, pre-audible shy, hallelujah. And I feel like this is the night. If you'll just stay open to the Spirit and let, let God speak to you. How many have needs you need God to meet for you? Just wave them right back. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm here as your servant tonight. I, uh, I just want to serve you whatever you need in that name of Jesus. But right now, let's go directly to the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to read... Three verses, 40, 41, and 42 of the second chapter of Luke. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Notice carefully now the 42nd verse. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. I'll tell you the rest of the story when we get back to that. Every person in this audience tonight came from two different natures. You came from your mama and your daddy. You have the blood of your father. But you may have some genes that are attributable to your mother and some genes attributable to your father. Some of you may look like mama and act like daddy. If you have a temper, the mother says, that's from the daddy. (laughs) 
If you're hard to get along with, the father says that's from the mother's side. But every one of us was, in, in, a, in a sense, if you want to call it that, we're, we're a mixed breed. We're a mixture between mama and daddy. How many will say amen? amen. Yes, sir. I happen to be tall like my daddy, but blue eyes like my mother. And I'm sure that some of mama's nature rubbed off on me. And I'm positive, beyond the shadow of any doubt, that the way I walk, and I've been told that I carry myself exactly like my daddy carried himself. It's from my natural birth. You're going to like this. Amen. 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 This is going to be your sermon tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But have you ever thought about the birth of Jesus? Now just think about it for a moment. His mother was a virgin. The Virgin Mary. The father was God the Father himself. Overshadowed, if you will, by the Holy Ghost. And so when Jesus was born into this world, he was born part of his mother and his father. Amen. Glory to God. He said, I can't do anything unless daddy tells me to. Amen. Whew, hallelujah. He says, my father has to tell me that. And yet he bore pain just like the flesh part of the mother. He bled just like the flesh part of the mother. He wept and sobbed and was in sorrow much like we would be. And yet, when he turned to his father's side, <laughs> he said, if I wanted to, I could call down 12 legions of angels. It was on his father's side that he commanded Lazarus to come forth. Amen. It was on his mother's side that he wept bitterly over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have gathered thee together as a hen doth her brood, but you would not. It was on his mother's side, even while hanging on the cross, that he cried, I thirst. Hallelujah. But it was on his father's side when he decided to take a walk one day and stepped out upon a stormy sea and the sea began to bear him up. Now back to the story. Twelve years old at Jerusalem. But the 41st verse said something exciting about him. He was... Filled with grace and with wisdom. The Bible said the grace of God was upon him. At 12 years old, a strange thing happened. Jesus began to sort of step out of his mother's side and learn what it was like to be on the father's side. How many see that? Because God gave him that wisdom. God, give us more wisdom today that comes from God. God, give us more power today that comes from God. God gives us more power today. Hallelujah. Then in, in 1987 in Paxson Revival Center here in Jacksonville, Florida, God, give us more power that comes directly from our Father's side. Somebody shout amen. Now you read the rest of that story and you will learn that Jesus' own parents left him for three days. How many know the story? Yes, sir. Didn't know where he was. 
They checked among the kin folks, didn't know where he was. When they found him, he was in the temple. Now watch this closely. He was astounding the doctors and the lawyers. Now at Jerusalem at the feast of the Passover every year, some of the greatest hierarchy of all religious men met in that temple. I believe among them was Gamaliel, the most learned teacher of his day. And it was this man that Paul sat right at his feet to learn. But I wonder if you can get the picture here for a moment of a young Jesus, 12 years old, and if you'll read the rest of the story, you will find that he was astounding the doctors and the lawyers and the scribes and the Pharisees. I mean, brother, they were taken back at this young man's wisdom. And where did it come from? It came from his father's side. How many will say amen? amen? Now, maybe old Gamaliel leaned over. I can see him sort of in my mind. Brother Dobbs, old silver-haired Gamaliel, yeah. leaning over and looking in the face of this bright young man. And he had a captive audience for three days, one little 12-year-old boy. And Gamaliel probably said something like this, Son, that's amazing what you're saying. How old are you, son? And the little fellow straightened up and looked up in the face of Gamaliel. No doubt he said, well, sir, are you talking about my mama's side or my father's side? Now, if you're talking about my mama's side, I'm 12 years old. But if you're talking about my father's side, I'm the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Somebody shout amen. Can you see it? Hallelujah. Never had a 12-year-old boy held a captive audience for three long days at the Passover feast in Jerusalem. Now I imagine the doctors, lawyers, scribes, Pharisees, Gamaliel, all of them stood around and looked. And maybe the question was asked like this. Well, you are a normal little boy, aren't you? I mean, you get hungry like other children? Well, sir, that depends. Are you talking about my mama's side or my father's side? Now, you folks over here be mama's side. You be father's side. Are you talking about my? Mama. Or my? If you're talking about my mama's side, mama says she can't hardly fill me up. Now, if you've got a 12-year-old around home, you know it. I believe he had a healthy appetite. But if you're talking about my father's side, I am the bread of life. And I have meat to eat that the world knows not of. Hallelujah. You're talking about my father's side. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. If you want to come up here tonight and attack another preacher in the flesh, just another individual, just another person, Make sure you do it on your mama's side. Because, honey, when I'm anointed, and I'm on my father's side, hallelujah, don't you touch God's anointed, and don't you do God's prophets no harm. Somebody say amen. I'll promise you that this pastor and this evangelist, once in a while we get tired because of our mama's side. We get thirsty. We even make mistakes, Pastor. Because part of us is from our mama's side. Hallelujah. But don't jump straddle of us and push us down, talk about us and kick us out the back door because once in a while we show you that we're human. I'm blaming mama for that. But praise God. On my father's side, he heard me somewhere on my knees saying, Lord, hallelujah, forgive me of my mistakes. Try me one more time. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Excuse me for a minute. Glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
Son, I never heard anything like this before in my life. Let me ask you something. Do you ever get thirsty? Are you talking about my... Mama's side. Or my... If you're talking about my mama's side, I wake her up sometime in the middle of the night and say, Mama, I'm thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But if you're talking about my father's side, I know about a well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God. It's a well down inside that just keeps springing up and springing up and springing up and springing up. Brother, if you know about this water, you will never, ever thirst again. Somebody shout amen with me tonight. Well, glory. I'm talking about living water. That ought to be enough to make you shout. Hallelujah. Living water. We'll never thirst again. Oh, Thank God. Mm -mm -mm. Living water. Say amen. amen. Say amen. You get some living water. Well, son, just to look at you. Now, just judging by your clothes. And that's the way a lot of the world likes to judge us, you know. Just looking at you. Now, my educated guess would be that you're from a poor family. I can tell by your sandals and tell by your clothes. Just tell by the way you kept. Is it true? Are you from a poor family? Well, sir, that depends. Are you talking about my? Oh my! Side. If you're talking about my mama's side, we wrote the book on poor. <laughs> Nobody could be poorer than we was. I didn't even have the privilege of being born in a decent house. I was born in a manger. The first clothes to touch my body was clothes they used to wipe down the cows with. Swaddling clothes. The first smell to reach my nostrils was the smell of an old stinking cow stable. You talk about pork. The foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. You're talking about my mama's side, sir. But let me tell you about my father's side. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Hallelujah. The Kripo Shotabaha. If it were not true, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Sir, you talk about rich on my father's side. Gold is the poorest thing in heaven. They paved the streets out of the stuff. Whoop, glory. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you may not believe a little 12-year-old boy, but I got a mansion bought and paid for. The most expensive piece of real estate that you could ever imagine. There's a pure river of life runs right behind my mansion. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. And I can see those doctors and lawyers and scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees and all the rest of them getting together and talking, communicating. Son, you're just like a little lamb. Here we are grown, educated men that know the law. Some of us can quote it by heart. And in our sight, you're like a little lamb. Is this true? 
See, he had a captive audience. They were waiting to hear him. He said, sir, are you talking about my mama's side? Are you talking about my father's side? If you're talking about my mama's side, yes, sir. I'll be like a lamb led to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shares is dumb. And I won't even be permitted to open my mouth. But if you're talking about my father's side, hallelujah, I'm transferred into the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hadibobo shotabai. Glory. Son, you sound like you come from royalty. No, I like this part. You know, if the world could only see your father's side tonight, whoo, my Lord, hallelujah. If the world could get a glimpse, say, how many are saved? And you know what, let me see your hand. If the world could get a glimpse of your father's side, they'll quit judging you by your mother's side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Shambach, I heard him on television here recently. He preached in this church before. Brother R.W. Shambach. He said he got up one night and he was talking about the world. And we don't have much longer. This old world's going to be destroyed. And we better get ready. And I believe that. I believe Jesus is soon coming. And the next morning he walked into a local bank to do some business. And the banker met him and shook his hand and said, Reverend Shambach said, I was in your service last night. And he said, my, you look so happy this morning. Brother Shambach said, I am. Amen. Said, you got a big smile on your face, a spring in your step, joy in your soul, victory in your heart. And said, last night I sat in your audience and you told us how bad everything was. Oh, thank you. Said, you talked about the world going to be destroyed. You talked about the torments and the plagues that was going to come up on the world. And today you out here smiling and looking like that. Brother Shambach just smiled real big. He said, I was talking about your world, not mine. Yeah. yeah. Amen. That's your world I'm talking about. Because this world is not my home. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. That's somebody else's world. Amen. That's on the mama's side. Thank God on the Father's side. This world is not our home. Can you shout amen? amen. Son, are you really from royalty? Oh, this is, this is good right here. You come from a royal background. He said, well, tell you the truth, on my mama's side, I'm going to be known as the king of the Jews. But let me tell you about my father's side. I'm not going to be limited to one group of people. They want to brand me the king of the Jews. In fact, that'll go over my cross one day. King of the Jews. But he said, that's man that's going to put that there. That's on the flesh side, the carnal side, my mama's side. On my father's side, I'm not the king of the Jews. I'm the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. That's on my father's side. Woo. And finally, mama's about to come find her little 12-year-old boy that's been lost. How many got your shouting shoes? Let me see. Whew. Man, if this don't make you shout... I'll put some dynamite under you. <laughs> Glory. I imagine old Gamaliel stroked his beard and looked over and said, Son, you've had a captive audience here for three days. Just want to know one more thing. You're talking about your father's side and all these supernatural things. Are you going to die like everybody else? <laughs> one more time. Let me hear it loud over here. He said, sir, are you talking about my, my side? Now let me hear it real loud over here. Are you talking about my, my side? If you're talking about my mama's side, I'm going to die at a very early age, 33 years old. 
Read the Bible. The Bible said he was filled with wisdom. He knew what the will of God was when he was 12 years old. I'll suffer and die on an old rugged cross. And the world will say I'm dead. They'll take me down and put me in a tomb. But I'm only going to be dead on my mama's side. Woo. On my father's side. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Never die. Believest thou this? Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody stand to your feet with me. And let's praise the Lord. Let's praise him for the resurrection. Praise him for the life. Yes, Lord. He's the resurrection. He is the life. Hallelujah. 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 Yea, daughter, the Spirit of the Lord would say unto thee, For I have brought thee from a long way, and I have seen thee in thy day of suffering and in thy day of trial, and in thy day of being beneath the surgeon's knife, I have seen thee. And yea, I was there the day that thou did declare, I will take the Lord as my Savior. And yea, the trial that thou art now enduring is as nothing in my sight. For the Lord saith unto thee, I will surely move on thy behalf. I will save and I will heal. For the Lord hath heard thy cry and the Lord grant this miracle right now. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother, stand to your feet in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When I was 11 years old, I would have died with tuberculosis. Mother Collier prayed for me and God gave me a new set of lungs. Hallelujah. Cursed be that machine. And Lord put a brand new set of lungs. Hallelujah. I come against this emphysemia. I come against this trouble that's trying to snuff out his life. Lord, upon these lungs, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Up, oh, show her. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in thy name right now. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and take a deep breath in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For lo, thou hast heard the words of the prophets that's prophesied over thee. And thou hast said in thyself, Lord, how long? But daughter, the day of thy reckoning is at hand. For the Lord surely knows who thou art. And the Lord knoweth on the first day that the Lord put his hand upon thee. Now rejoice and praise the Lord. Help and be healed and set free in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And son, the Lord knoweth from the first time that thou did receive a touch of the Lord. And thou hast been called out before and thou hast been ministered to. But since then, Satan would surely put something back upon thee to bring thee down and bring thee into weakness and into affliction. But this night, saith the Lord, shall a brand new heart be created and thy stomach shall be made new. And yea, strength and life shall return unto thee. And now, Lord, Grant it, Lord, in Jesus' name I praise you for it. And in Jesus' name I call it done. Somebody say amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hand on top of her hand. Yea, for the devil hath tried to rob thy joy. And Satan hath tried to rob thy victory. And yea, thou hast tried to hold on to the promise that hath been given to thee from the lips of the prophet. But Satan is a robber and a thief. And Satan hath tried to rob thee, yea, even of that victory and that joy. But this night, my daughter, this night, my son, shall it be restored unto thee. And ye shall rejoice. Yea, and ye shall praise the Lord. For the Lord is in the midst. And this time, Satan shall not steal thy joy nor thy victory away from thee. For the the Lord will put around thee a hedge and thou shalt praise him for the Lord doeth it now. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. 
For daughter, the Lord seeth thy heart break, and the Lord seeth thy heart ache, and the Lord knoweth that thou hast stood, as it were, in the gap for thy loved ones. And yea, Satan hath also attacked thy body, and also the body of thy loved ones, and also the soul of thy loved ones hath Satan attacked. But the Lord saith unto thee this night, I will cause thee to stand in the gap. I will make healing come upon thy body, and ye shall lay hands upon those in thy family, yea, that need a touch, and they shall be healed. And yea, if ye will stand in the gap, behold, I say unto thee, not a member of your family will be lost, for the Lord will hear thy interceding and thy prayer, for the Lord speaketh it even unto thee. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My mantle is laying right up on that organ there. This is the job for the mantle, this next job. Glory to God. I only use that when the Lord tells me to. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Red represents the blood. The mantle represents a double portion of the power of God. Thank God. Thank God. Get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father in the breath of the Lord, when this mantle touches her, she's going to be delivered, hallelujah, from all of her oppressions and her afflictions in Jesus' name. Lord, I praise you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, when this mantle touches her, she's going to get a brand new touch in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Lord shows me you've been depressed. You've been in a state of oppression. God wants to bring you out. Lord, when this mantle touches her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bring her out of all of her trouble in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, heal that broken heart in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. God said it's time to move up a notch. Move up a little higher. Are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, from this moment on, let him move up into the glory of God, I pray in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's some folks in here that uh, God shows me God shows me trouble in the stomach, especially on the right side. The devil says cancer, but God says he's going to heal. Hallelujah. I want you to step out in the aisle right now. If you're having that trouble and pain in the right side, I feel it. Yes, Lord. One, there's about, there's another one or two. Should be right there. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Lift your hand, sister. In the name of Jesus, I smite that trouble in that right side. You devil of cancer, you can't have her. She belongs to Jesus. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Now, besides the affliction, you've been awfully troubled. I see a lot of trouble. Devil's really playing tricks on your mind. If he had his way, he'd just drive you crazy. In fact, the devil tried to tell you you was going crazy. Is this true? That's true. Yes, it is. Acts of loved ones caused your heart to be broken and you just went into despondency. But I'm telling you, the devil's a liar. I'm going to put this mantle on you tonight. Not only will your side be healed, that's just a little thing. But the biggest thing going to happen to you tonight is when God brings you out of this depression and puts you over in the glory side. You're going to get out of your mama's side and get over in your father's side tonight. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now, hallelujah. Grant this miracle for my sister in Jesus' name. Baba Sata. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whew. The Lord showed me you was being healed when you stepped out in the aisle. Just lift your hands and receive it. I thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. It's done. 
Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for touching her now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Well, glory to God. You may be seated if you can. My Lord, keep your mind right on the Lord tonight. Now, how many believe this revival's right on time? I've never been so sure in my life as I'm sure tonight this revival's right on time. This woman's full of tumors. Devil said cancer's going to destroy her body. She said, I've been standing on faith. I've been saying, no, it can't be. How many believe God will move every one of those tumors tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Listen, as a witness that God moves in this ministry, I'd like for every person in this audience that in some way in the last 10 years that I've been coming to Paxson Revival Center, if God has given you a miracle under this ministry in the last 10 years, would you just stand to your feet some kind of a miracle just keep standing amen hallelujah look at here just just remain standing don't sit down look around sister here's teeth that's been filled tumors that's disappeared my lord every kind of conceivable miracle let let's see uh, just holler out now what god did for you what happened to you a financial miracle? Amen. What happened to you? S saved your life three times. Healed your body. Delivered you, yes. And, and touched you in the spiritual. You got out of your mama's side and got on your father's side. That's what happened. And what about you? Amen. Come on, louder folks, because we want to all hear you. Uh-huh. Uh, what was wrong with y'all? Arthritis. God heals arthritis. What was wrong with you? And God healed it, see? Broken heart. Amen. Bursitis. See, the devil says that the Lord don't heal arthritis and bursitis. Here's two witnesses. Louder. What, what kind of healing? Female problems. All right. Way back. Amen. Healed alcoholism. Glory. Healed your stomach. Praise the Lord. Way in the back in the yellow. Amen. Thank God. A lady in blue. Yes, sir. Step out in the aisle. Let me look at you. First time I saw you. Um, ooh, look at that. Uh, now... I called her out in one of these crusades. How much did you weigh? How much? 345. And how much weight did you lose? Got down to 137. Amen. Now she's put a little of it back on. But she lost from 345 to 137. How many believe it takes God to help you do that? Give Jesus a hand. Yes, sir. Sister back here. All right, wait a minute now, a little louder so we can all hear. There you go, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Doctors gave up. She's in the hospital. God delivered her, the lady in white. Amen, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sister here. God healed you of cancer. 
Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Diabetes. The first time you was here, I hadn't heard from my son in 14 years. And I brought a picture and you prayed over it. And that was my first miracle. The next day he was in my yard. Y'all listening to that? 14 years. The next day he was there. Hallelujah. Then what happened next time? I was here at a cataracts. When the doctor said if they got off my eyes, man would take them off. But God took them off. Give Jesus a hand for those miracles. Hadn't heard from the son in 14 years. And the next day he showed up after his picture was prayed over. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you ought to be ready. <laughs> Let me see the hands of everybody that has no doubt God's going to heal this woman. Amen. Glory. Devil don't stand a chance here tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for moving every one of these tumorous cancers. Almighty God, when this mantle touches her, every one of them is going to be gone in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, 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 Shataya. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank God. Woo. Hallelujah. Everybody give Jesus a hand for what he's doing. Yes, sir. That's the sound of victory. Somebody say amen. Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. Whoo. While she's praising God for those cancerous tumors being gone. <laughs> oh, glory. I tell you what, let's lift both hands and praise God with her. Lord, I praise you. I thank you for this miracle. I thank you for these other miracles. Thank you for what you're doing in this place tonight. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this freedom of the Spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to tell about two more miracles. And some of you know about it. Brother Dobbs knows well he was in on this miracle. Sometimes I pray and God works a miracle. And sometimes he prays and God works a miracle. But when we pray together, whew, glory, when two, see, one can chase a thousand. And two can chase ten thousand. And I don't know if the little lady is here tonight by the name of Sister Irene Butts. Are you here, Sister Irene? She called me on the telephone and was telling me about her son that was dying with cancer. Doctors had given him up. And there was absolutely no hope. Brother Dobbs was praying. And she called me and I was praying. The other day my phone rang. And she said, Brother Up the Grove, I got another request. Let me tell you what happened to my son when y'all prayed. Said, right after I hung up the phone and we agreed, you know, there's no distance in prayer. And I believe you and this whole church was in prayer for that, that one young man dying with cancer. And said right after we hung up the phone, instead of getting well and getting up, said he got more violently ill. He got sicker. And she thought, Lord, what is this? And said he practically had to crawl to the bathroom. But when he did, he spit up that cancer and it was as big as a teacup. And she said it had legs all around it. Just looked like hundreds and hundreds of legs all around it. She said the most foul odor. But he spit it up. And from that day to this was completely and totally made whole 
of a cancerous devil that was claiming his life. Now give Jesus a hand for it. Amen. And I might as well put in a plug right here for Friday morning. On one Friday morning service, I was preaching here. And this side was nearly full on that Friday morning. And a man came in the door and sat near the back. And at that time, we didn't have the convenience of this cordless mic. Thank God for cordless mics. Amen. And uh, I was preaching. And I got about halfway back and my, my cord ran out. And I wanted to get to that man because the Lord said call him out. So... I couldn't go but just so far, so I called the man to me. And he was visibly shaken. And, and the moment he walked in, God said, quit preaching and call him out. And it's exactly what I did. He said, preacher, he said, I just had an argument with my son, his oldest son, and said his mother was with him. And said the argument was so violent until when he came down the steps, I thought he was coming after me. And I just reached in the pocket of my car and I pulled out my revival, I mean, my uh, revolver. And he said I emptied five shells into his stomach. Bang, 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 just like that. This was on Friday morning. Some of you was here and heard this man. Was you here? You heard it? How many was here that Friday morning? There's the hands said he grabbed his stomach and fell. The mother screamed and I saw blood gushing out between his fingers. And said something just said, get in my car and run. And he said, I was speeding down Commonwealth, going as fast as I could go. And something got hold of my car and made me turn into this church. Remember that? Said, made me turn in here. I couldn't help it. And said, I don't know why I'm here. Something said, run for your life. And I had the church turn around, stretch your hand toward him and pray. And then the Spirit of the Lord said to that man, go back to where you know the nearest hospital is, to that son and that wife. When that man came back, he told the most amazing story. He said, I went to the nearest hospital and said, when I got to that hospital, my wife and my son was walking down the steps and said, the doctors had taken him into the operating room began to make x-rays and said when they took the clothes off of him, they could not find one bullet hole in his body anywhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know what happened? The man repented of his sins and God forgave him. There's nothing God can't do. That happened in this church. Amen. How many believe God can do anything? Anything. Anything. Amen. Amen.